All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another day of Read Rich and Righteous. Uh, we had some technical issues this morning where um, YouTube was not allowing me to go live. Uh, hey, maybe the information is too strong and uh, we're getting this consciousness out there. So uh, no, I'm not going to assume that. I'm not going to believe that. It's just a technical error again i'm grateful for all of these technologies that allow us to connect from instagram facebook youtube zoom the internet in and of itself our cell phone providers the cell phones that you have the computers that you have i'm grateful for all of these technologies that allow us to spread this consciousness as quickly as possible so rather than get frustrated in this moment we just stand in gratitude and oftentimes we aren't grateful for something until it is gone right and so when your health is gone all of a sudden you're grateful for health when somebody you love is gone all of a sudden you're grateful for them and we have to learn the practice of how to be grateful without experiencing loss without experiencing lack of something. And so uh, with that, I stand grateful right now for all of these technologies that have allowed us to connect. I'm staying grateful here in this moment for the breath that I have in my lungs. I stand grateful here um, for all of you. I stand grateful here for the, uh, the divine download that came through me as the Rich and Righteous book. I stand grateful for my entire life experience that has led me up to this awareness about money. And I am so grateful for each of you for showing up every single day at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on weekdays to actually uh, get these divine downloads um, and, and actually integrate them into your lives. Um, I've got all kinds of DMs and messages from you about how, um, how much of a blessing this space has been. You know, I never intended to create a church, um, and uh, but this is a spiritual space. Okay, um, I don't. Uh, I'm not too keen on these institutions or these buildings because we know that the true temple is here, right? But here we have created a little community uh, really quickly in about a month um, as we simply just read uh, "Rich and Righteous" together. Um, spiritual secrets and mastery, money manifestation in your mind. Uh, I told you this before. I got a divine download and a nudge from Spirit about four weeks ago. That said, just wake up and read your book, Julian. Just wake up and read your book. Um, you know, the collective consciousness is continuing to speak about recession and. Uh, um, and uh, and again, um, just because the collective consciousness is speaking about recession doesn't mean that recession has to be part of your experience. It is done unto you as you believe. And so <clears throat> we believe differently. We believe that uh, abundance is our birthright because we are children of God. And so uh, with that, we are seeking to stay in that consciousness every single day by starting our day by pouring into our temple and into our mind. So uh, we're going to continue our reading. Um, today we have a uh, we're continuing our section on, um, on how to reprogram your mind for more money. Uh, yesterday, we went over, uh, there's four stages, which is program, realizing that you've been programmed. Actually, I'll show you the chart again. <coughs> so um, uh, Zoom, I don't know, Zoom blurs things out uh, unless I take off the feature. Let me see if I can take off that feature. Okay, there we go. I'll take off the blur. So um, we're going through this four stage process, which is we know that the scripture is be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is Romans 12, 2. Right. And we know that there's a four step process to reprogram your mind. One is recognizing that you've been programmed. Many people don't recognize that they've been programmed. Uh, yesterday, we had a sister who decided to unfollow, even though all I spoke was fact and truth, all verifiable fact and truth. And she decided to unfollow because that truth hurt. Right. But we also know that the truth will set you free. And if you cannot receive truth um, without judgment and without getting into your feelings and emotions, then it's likely that you are one of the most programmed people out there and you're in the danger zone. Um, and we prayed for her. Um, we prayed for her just for her unfoldment, because guess what? I've been in that space before where space, I've been in that space. I recognize my own journey. There are areas in my life where somebody was giving me truth and I was not ready to receive it. OK, so there's no judgment towards that individual. Um, because we've all been at that space, maybe even in our religious journey, we've been in that space where we did not want to hear a truth that was different than what we currently believe. And the reason why is because if that brick, if that brick, if that foundational brick gets drawn out from her or anybody, then guess what? It makes you question every other brick that your mental foundation has been built on, right? And that's the process that people do not want to go through because then it all crumbles. But as Jesus said, I will tear down the temple, right? I'll tear down the temple um, and rebuild it in three days. The temple is our mind. We can tear down our temple and rebuild it. And that's what we're in the constant process of doing is we're tearing down our temple and rebuilding it. The mind that you have today, the level of consciousness that you have today is not the same that you had last month. 
before we started this process. It's not the same as last year. It's not the same as five years ago. It's not the same as a decade ago. You are constantly rebuilding your temple unless, unless you were programmed and fully unaware that you were programmed. Then your, uh, then your temple stays the same. And if you've ever seen a piece of real estate, okay? If you've ever seen a piece of real estate <clears throat> that um, stays the same, that does not get taken care of, what happens to it? And you know, I love real estate. What happens to real estate that does not, um, yeah, is not attended to, that has no attention and intention for it? What happens to real estate? It deteriorates and it ultimately crumbles. It deteriorates and it ultimately crumbles, okay? So we are constantly being renewed every single day. And, um, <clears throat> and so uh, we, Focus or we our focus right now is not on the physical, it is focused on the mental rebuilding. Our beliefs are the building box of life. Okay. And so um so some of the programs that we've had, right? Uh like the 4040, I call it the 4040 club, working 40 hours a week for 40 years, right? For an employer. The 4040 club was a a program that worked for past generations. But that program isn't working as well for our generation. Higher education or college was a program that worked. Liberal arts education was a program that worked for past generations. And it is not working for our generation in the same way. So what we have is a situation where other people are telling us, olders, and even older people are telling us, okay, based on the times that they were born into living, trying to apply those programs to today. But today, I cannot put a three and a half. How many remember those three floppy disks? You cannot put three and a half floppy disk into your MacBook today. You can't even put in the hard, the little hard disk into your MacBook today. You cannot put a CD into your MacBook today. In fact, in some MacBooks, you can't even put a USB drive in there. So what that's saying is that the programs that worked for past generations don't work today. And so when your elders try to share with you a program that worked for them and you reject it, don't judge them for the fact that they're trying to push a program onto you, right? Because guess what? That program worked for them and that's the only program that they know. So you don't have to lash back at your parents or anybody else who's trying to push a program onto you because that program is serving them and working for them in some kind of way or it did in the past, right? But sometimes we say, uh, we, we look at them and we're, we're angry at them when that's what worked for them. And so just accept the fact that that program worked for them, but it will likely not work for you. That's it, that's it. And there's no judgment, there's no animosity, there's no hate, right? And people are gonna push what they, what they know. And, um, and you, when you're going into a conversation where somebody's trying to influence your life in a particular direction, you just have to be aware of that, okay? Hopefully they have your best interest at heart right? Usually coming from a place of love, but if you're not familiar with the new way that things work, then it's going to be hard to, it's going to be hard. Um, they're not going, they're going to get their ideas rejected. And, um, and you may feel some kind of way but with, uh, with them trying to push their way of being onto you. Okay. So each one of us has our own personal religion. We have our own personal belief system that we have to um, examine. And we have to uh, uncover and uplift every single stone. There should be no stone standing. Meaning that we examined every single uh, building block of belief that was in our mind in every area of our life, from the way we think about religion and God, whether the way we think about men and women, the way we think about love, the way we think about education, the way we think about family, the way we think about money, the way we think about food. We are we have to go through the process, and that's what we're covering today, deprogramming. We have to go through the turning over every single stone. I remember watching a video, um, and, you know, I keep giving these real estate examples as we're talking about these building blocks of belief. I remember watching a video. Um, it, was, it wasn't just a, yeah, a, a news report, a building collapsing, right? It was a building, I believe, in Florida with hundreds and of people in it. And the reality is that the foundation, right, the foundation that the building was built on, for whatever reason, the builder skipped steps and used materials that were not, um, that, that would not support the weight of the building above it. And the same thing occurs for a lot of people. And, and I, in fact, this is why so many people are depressed right now. This is why so many people are depressed right now. It's only 
is because the foundational building blocks that they built their entire life on actually aren't strong enough to support the life that they're trying to build. It's kind of like Jenga. If I pull out a block, if I pull out a block from the bottom, then what happens to everything above it? It tumbles. And one of the biggest set of building blocks that we have right now, um, one of the biggest set of building blocks that we have is, um, is, uh, is our, religion, our religion. And the reason why religion is so crucial is because not only does it use God to penetrate the subconscious mind, the language of God, it use God in many ways, um, uh, the language of God. Um, thank you so much for, you know, somebody said I pinned um, money and manifestation. I put a book at, oh, thank you so much. I, I pinned the, you are wrong. The book, I'm going to take that down. Pause. Thank you for letting me know. Get the book. At www. Um, www. Money. You can get the book at manifestation. Um, but again, uh, you can network and chat because many people who are here have already bought the book. So there's no last year. Many people who are here have already bought the book, received the books now, and um, you can ask uh, family. If they will see the book, but then we don't ask from a place of need. Uh, we ask from a place of sincere need, right? Two different survivor frequencies from which we ask, right? And don't ask from a victim and say, look, um, I'm willing to send, I don't have $100 to buy the book right now, um, but I'm willing to pay for shipping. I'll cash out for shipping right now. I'm going to make it as, listen, this is a, this is a key lesson right now. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for somebody to get you. This is, I haven't started reading it. <laughs> want to make it, if you are experiencing scarcity in your life right now, you want to make it as easy as possible for somebody to give to you. Okay? You want to make it as easy as possible for somebody to give to you. So you want to possible for somebody to give to you, right? And watch this. So for those of you who are in scarcity right now and ex or experiencing scarcity, but you're here working on your abundance mindset so that we change that, you want a book. You don't have $100. There's many people who have bought the book, right? So now they have extra copies that they're seeking to give. You want to make it as easy as possible for somebody to give to you, for you to receive. And not only does, is this an exercise for you in that right here and right now, watch this. You also want to make it as easy as God, as easy as possible for God to give to you. The reason you might be experiencing scarcity right now is because you have not made it easy for God to give to you. God has to go through all of these obstacles, including your limiting beliefs, your scarcity consciousness, your fear to give to you. And so it's not that God can't give to you despite those things, but God was actually going to use, God takes the path of least resistance. So God is actually going to give to those who are ready to receive and actually not only receive, but also use what they've received as quickly as possible. So this is an example and an opportunity for you to put yourself in a position of making it easier for somebody to give to you. Same thing with your business. That would be like having a business, right, where you do, <laughs> you do hair or you do anything, but not having any payment processors. You don't have Cash App, you don't have PayPal, you don't have Venmo, right? You don't have any way for people to pay you, right? You're out here doing things, you're giving, but you have no way to receive. You're making, you're creating an obstacle for people to receive to you. Oh, I only accept cash. Well, 80% of people ain't carrying cash anymore. So you only accept cash. Well, now that's limiting the way you actually are able to receive. And it's making it harder for people to give to you. So this act and this, these demonstrations, one, the demonstration of even buying the book, the book costs $100. It costs $100. That's um, this, the act of buying this book is an act of abundance right then and right there. Okay. 
And for those of you who don't have $100, then now there's an opportunity for you to say, okay, how can I receive a gift or a blessing from someone else? Okay, all of these little things are designed, I've designed these things in a way for you to get out of your scarcity consciousness, not only in mind, but also in action. Buying this book at $100 is an action. It's an act of abundance. You asking for help, saying that I'm experiencing scarcity right now. You asking, you asking, you shall receive. That is an act of abundance. You making it easy for somebody to give to you, saying, hey, I need a book. I don't have $100, but I can cash up you $10 to, uh, so that it's easy for you to mail it to me. That is an act of abundance. You are retraining your mind and your being you're being doing so that you can change your having. You're doing that right here and right now in this space. These are all experiments in the space right here in the moment, real time. Are you understanding that? All right. So um, we haven't even started reading, y'all. Yeah, for those of you coming in late, <laughs> we're reading Richard Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. We had some technical difficulties this morning. Um, uh, YouTube was not allowing me to go live. I think it's because of my internet connection. So I'm recording what would normally be on YouTube on Zoom. I will upload it to YouTube afterwards. Um, everybody has come over to Instagram right now. We're supposed to be reading <laughs> page 117, the program. Um, and we're already half an hour in and spirit just moved me and I'm, I'm speaking about things that are relevant to this. <laughs> but we haven't even started reading yet, y'all. But uh, let's get into the reading right now. Um, uh, and uh, we're reading one, two, three, four, five. We're reading uh, seven pages today. <laughs> cool. I, I just got moved. I hope. Uh, uh, I hope. That, I hope what I shared um, was still powerful for you. Uh, I think it was. It, it moved me. <laughs> All right. Cool. So uh, we're on page one seventeen. What's going on, Jessica? Good to see you. We're on one seventeen, um, and we're in the section of how to reprogram your mind for more money. All right. Cool. So deprogram. Mark 22 says, and no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wines into new wineskins. As we become conscious of our programming, beliefs, and thoughts and observe them, we can step back and inquire about their origin. Okay, every belief that you have, you are inquiring about its origin. Where did this belief come from? Where did this thought and this idea come from? That's the only way that you can cut it off at the root, okay? Who and where did that idea come from? Why did they tell me that at that time? Does it still hold true? Why do I react like that when this happens? It's all programming until you learn uh, to initially create and choose your own thoughts from, <clears throat> from the sea of thoughts you're swimming in called life, okay? Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of Eat, Love, Pray said, you need to learn how to select your thoughts just the same way you select your clothes every day. This is a power you can cultivate. If you want to control things in your life so bad, work on the, on the mind. That's the only thing you should be trying to control, okay? You have many thoughts, but most of them are not yours. I'm gonna repeat that. <coughs> you have many thoughts, but most of them are not yours. I said it yesterday. Most adults have never had an original thought. 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old. Most adults have never had an original thought. That's just, that's just crazy. And most people won't think that that's true. No, I, I can think for myself. I think for myself. This was my idea. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Okay, because um, you know a lot of people uh, grow up and um, and we say, oh no, I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my mom. But then all of a sudden, you in your thirties and forties, and people are like, oh you 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 talk just like your mama. Your daddy used to do that. The the person, if you had a negative relationship with your parents, the person that you've been trying to avoid being, you end up becoming. Why? because of the programming. <clears throat> You're trying to consciously reject it, right? But that which you resist also persists. So everything that you've been trying to reject in, uh, for those of you who have negative relationships with your parents, everything that you've been trying to reject, 
everything that you resist actually persists <clears throat> and you'll find yourself in your 30s and 40s and somebody who knows both you and your parents will be like oh you just like your daddy he'd be like what no i'm not because you thought you were doing the exact opposite <laughs> You thought you were being and doing the exact opposite, but the programming was so deep that you realized that you ended up being the same, okay? So you have many thoughts, but most of them are not yours. You think you're thinking, but you've only, you're only regurgitating what you were taught to think. You think you're thinking, but you're only regurgitating what you were taught to think. In school, you were graded according to how close your thoughts were to the teacher's thoughts not for how well you thought independently. This is why the valedictorian is not the most successful person in the world. I remember the valedictorian from high school. She's doing okay. The valedictorian from my high school, she's doing okay. Her GPA did not have any reflection on how successful she would be. What her GPA reflected was how good she was at following rules and thinking like the teachers. This is why liberal arts education and traditional education isn't serving us because it's teaching us to think like somebody as opposed to teaching us to think for ourselves. Do you understand the difference? They say they're about critical thinking, but then they grade you according to how aligned your thinking is with the person who taught you. If you think differently than the professor, all of a sudden you're getting bad grades, even if your thought is supported with evidence. So for those of you who have children <laughs> and you see them and they get their report card, don't love them or celebrate them just because the grades are good. Mm -hmm. Celebrate them because in that semester, they wrote a report, a book report, and you saw their own independent thinking, not because of the grade. Don't celebrate them because of the grade because then you train them to become a rule follower to only follow authority, okay? You're actually training them and, and affirming them and incentivizing them to only follow authority. That's what, that's what being a good kid is. But when they come home with a book report that they wrote where you saw independent thought, when they create a piece of art and they can tell you a narrative about that piece of art, like Jada, because it was an original story. It wasn't bits and pieces from Disney stories or this and that. It was an original story from her own creative mind. That's what I saw. That is more impressive to me than, oh, I got an A in this, daddy. No, I'm impressed with you using the skill sets that you're learning there to create brand new, something original that is from you. Okay. She also did this painting of um, New York City. She said, New York is light and it's dark. And so it's a painting of the city in the light and a city in the dark. And she has a whole story about how she experiences New York in that way. And she decided to paint it in the best way that she could, right, on a, on a canvas. That's what I celebrate her for, not for getting A's and for being a rule follower because there's no other piece of art out there that looks like that. That came from her own heart and mind, all right? We're on page 118, okay? According to some estimates, <clears throat> there are over 4,000 religions in the world. I beg to differ. I believe that there are 7 billion plus religions in the world, one for each person called their personal religion. While people may share common ideologies and group themselves, we, are all, we all have a unique collection of beliefs about how God, the world, the universe, life, love, money, and success work and should be. Our personal religions go beyond a relationship to some higher power, but religion is usually the root of many of our beliefs because most religions touch on every aspect of life uh, just mentioned. Whatever belief system you were born into or bought into isn't the issue in terms of your freedom. It's any incongruence between you uh, between what you believe and who you are that we need to explore. Anytime how we live and experience life isn't aligned with what we believe, we feel dissonance. At that moment, one of two things is true. Listen very carefully. What you believe is wrong and not aligned with universal laws, 
So if you're experiencing any friction or stress in your life, it's one of these two things. Either what you believe is wrong and not aligned with universal laws, or what you believe is right, but how you're being isn't in alignment with that, and it isn't in alignment with that belief. Okay. So <clears throat> if you're experiencing any cognitive dissonance, any stress in your life, especially mentally and emotionally, for some of you, dating has been a struggle, right? Dating has been a struggle and you're wondering why it's not working. I want you to think about these two things. Either what you believe is wrong and not aligned with universal laws or what you believe is right, but how you're being isn't in alignment with that belief, okay? So here's an example from a dating standpoint. So you believe that um, love is supposed to be like this, right? That's what you believe, right? You believe that it's supposed to be like this, but universal law says that that's not how love actually operates. So you're going out trying to force love or this other person to be like this, or you're being like this and you're not getting the response back that you desire because that's not actually how love operates. That may be how you've seen love operate in your family, but you also saw the dysfunction in your family. So you're trying to take a formula for love into the dating world or into a relationship with someone else and it's based on false premises and therefore you're getting rejection and negative feedback, okay? Or you actually know the truth about love, right? In terms of how to pick a partner, how to navigate uh, conflict, right? And things of that nature, but you're not moving in that way. You know the truth, okay? There's a knowing doing gap. You know the truth, but in terms of you doing the truth and acting on the truth, you're not doing it. So you're experiencing friction. So those are the two reasons why um, you're ever feeling stress and cognitive dissonance in your experience in the various domains of your life. Okay. Again, either what you believe is wrong. Okay. And it's not in alignment with the truth. Okay. Or you know the truth, but you're not acting in accordance with the truth. Okay. We're at the bottom of page 118. <laughs> the Latin root, uh, the Latin root of the word religion is religi religiere. The Latin root for the word religion is religiere, okay? Which is to bind or bond. Belief is the universal bonding agent. Y'all thought that Gorilla Glue was the universal bonding agent? Y'all thought that duct tape <laughs> was the universal bonding agent? No, belief is the universal bonding agent. Your belief system can bind and imprison you or it can liberate and free you. Any belief that is incongruent with who you truly are, your true nature will feel limiting. Any belief that is incongruent with who you truly are, your true nature will feel limiting. As a little God, lowercase g, you have no limits like your mother, father God who art in heaven. Life has universal laws similar to gravity. And anytime we live in opposition to those laws, life doesn't feel as free. We experience resistance, but the resistance is not coming from the outside. It is coming from within. It is us resisting living in alignment with our true individual nature and nature itself. It is, it's not your fault or your parents, teachers, preachers, friends, significant others, or societies. I wanna free you right now. It is not your fault. It is not your fault. Everyone is well-meaning and doing their best given their degree of understanding. They thought that they were sharing what is best for you. And while they may love you dearly, in most cases, people who love you operate from a place of safety and security rather than free and unconditional love. This is one of the hardest lessons to recognize. While they may love you dearly, in most cases, people who love you operate from a place of safety and security rather than free and unconditional love. Your parents wanted you to, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Why? Not because that was what was best for me. They wanted me to be a doctor because they wanted me to be safe and secure as their offspring. Because if I'm not safe and secure as their offspring, then they may have feel, felt like they failed as parents. Okay? So they wanted me to go into a safe and secure field that they were familiar with. Okay? But that isn't free and unconditional love. That's not free and unconditional love. And so um, you have to be able to know that uh, when somebody who loves you is speaking to you from a space of fear as opposed to a space of freedom. And 
You don't have to come at them. As I said earlier, you don't have to come at them in that moment. Be like, why are you projecting your fear and your limited beliefs on me? You don't have to do none of that, y'all. Don't waste your energy, okay? Just recognize where they're coming from and that deep down, okay? Below, beneath that fear, that thick layer of fear, it is all coming from love, family. Below that thick layer of fear that you can sense in their projection, because they might not have pursued their own dreams, okay? They might be experiencing lack economically and financially, okay? They project that fear on you, but deep down below that is still rooted in love, okay? So take advice about freedom and finances from someone who is, listen, taking advice about freedom or finances from someone who is not free or financially well off is not a smart thing to do regardless of how much they love you. I'm gonna repeat that. Taking advice about freedom or finances from someone who is not free or financially well off is not a smart thing to do regardless of how much they love you. Learn from others as long as you feel they are elevating your thoughts and thought processes, okay? We're at the bottom of page 119. Be aware that whenever your life deviates from what those uh, who love you taught you or what they think is best for you, resistance may arise in them and then get spoken aloud to you. This is part of the program. There are people in your life not intentionally trying to keep you in the matrix, but just the way the matrix is set up is that not only will they try to program you, but then the people around you will also try to keep you in the program in the name of love. Some of you are afraid to step away from the religion that you've identified with for so long because you feel if you do so, that the people who love you, who are still in that space, okay, will reject you. You feel their love for you will decrease. Guess what, family? That's not true love. That's not true love. I only love you if you believe what I believe. That's not true love, family. And I'm going to move away. I can still love back because I don't need you to believe what I believe to love you. But there are people who need you to believe what they believe in order to love you. That's conditional love. I don't need any of you to believe what I believe to love you, but there's people out there who need you to, the only way they love you is if you believe what they believe, if you do what they say. They're not even in control of their own life, but they wanna control yours and manipulate you, okay? And most people are not doing it intentionally. It's just part of the program. <clears throat> because <clears throat> especially if I believe something and I was programmed, most people who are programmed, they, um. They feel comfortable. You want to know why they feel comfortable in their program? They feel comfortable in their program because they see other people in the same program. So it's a numbers game. Oh, my religion is bigger than yours. My set is bigger than yours. This is why you should come over here. You're going to go over there where you're going to be by yourself. If you saw, if you saw a man with 12 disciples running around in the Middle East thousands of years ago, what would you call that? And they were calling him master. What would you call that? You call that a cult, right? You call that a cult, right? <laughs> they then they running around the Middle East barefoot, calling him master. You would call that a cult. Why? Because there's only twelve. There's only thirteen people, right? But of course, as it gets bigger, as Christianity gets bigger through the, the Roman Empire, making it their official religion. All of a sudden, it's who said is bigger than yours. We bigger than Islam now. We bigger than this. We the biggest out here. And people get confidence, not in the belief. They have confidence in the numbers of people who believe. They're not, com they're not, conf they're not confident in the actual belief. What gives them the confidence is the number of people who believe what they believe. And this isn't, I'm just using Christianity as an example. It can apply to any religion. It can apply to politics, right? 
people not really democratic. They've not really Republican. They just confident in the number of people who say they're also democratic or also Republican. Their, their confidence comes from the number of people who are also programmed, not in the actual beliefs of that particular thing. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, we're at the bottom of page 119. Be aware that whenever your life deviates from those who love you, taught you, or what they think is best for you, resistance may arise in them and then get spoken aloud to you. This is part of the program. Programs typically seek to perpetuate themselves. Okay, programs typically seek to perpetuate themselves. This deviation could lead to arguments, rifts, distance, and silence. But beyond that thick layer of fear is an even thicker layer of love. At the end of the day, people like our parents simply want what is best for us. They want us to be happy. But the catch is that they only know one way to go, which is the one that they took. The only way that they know to go is the one that they took. Even though the paths are infinite, theirs is, right, is the right route and the one they will want you to take too. Okay, <clears throat> we're at the top of page 120, family. Thank you for joining us on Instagram today. Uh, YouTube was acting up. It would not allow me to go live. So we always have backups. We have, uh, we're have either on YouTube or Instagram. If one isn't working, then just hop over to the other one. And so thank God for uh, multiple technologies, for the internet, and uh, for us to still be able to meet today. All right. Um, we're at the top of page 120. We have um, three and a half pages left. We want our children to be better than us. But at the very same time, we train them to think exactly like us and scold them when their way of being, doing, and having deviates from the family or what is familiar. How crazy is that? We want our children to be better than us. But at the very same time, we train them to think exactly like us. How are they going to be better than us if they think exactly like we did? How are they going to get different results than us when they're using the exact same thinking that we had? but yet we want them to be better than us, okay? Proverbs 22, six says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But what it does not account for is that the old thinking, the old wineskins of the older generation may not hold in today's world. In, this, in the time that some of these scriptures were written, the world was evolving a lot slower, okay? Instead of creating, listen, listen to me on this, Instead of creating descendants, meaning going downward, we want to create ascendants, meaning that each generation is better than the next. I don't want descendants, family. My daughter will not be a descendant of me. The family tree will not go down. Trees go up. I want her to be an ascendant, meaning that she reaches a higher level of living, a higher level of thinking, and a higher level of life than I was able to achieve. So we have to be very mindful and watchful of our language and what we're actually speaking, okay? I don't want her to go down. But when you have generational curses in your family, yes, that's how you create descendants, okay? But what we actually want to do is we want generational blessings to go upward and create ascendants. <coughs> you often see several generations stuck in the same place and patterns because of the same programming and thinking was handed down from one generation to the next like a recipe book. Collectively, history only repeats itself because our thinking hasn't evolved. That's the only reason that history repeats itself is because our thinking hasn't changed, okay? Second paragraph on page 120. As children, we are naturally people pleasers. We may be daddy's girl or mama's boy. Initially, we all desire to fit into the tribe and be accepted, so we do things to make others happy. But as adults, we must let go of people pleasing. You can't make someone else happy. I'm gonna repeat that three times. You can't make someone else happy. You can't make someone else happy. A lot of you are experiencing frustration in life because that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to make your parents happy. You're trying to make your boss happy. You're trying to make your significant other happy. You're trying to make your kids happy. You can't make someone else happy. Just type that in. I need to make sure that that lands. That's going to save y'all a lot of trauma, drama, and stress. You may not get it today. You may not get it today, 
but I need you to know that you heard it today. <laughs> I need you to type that in. You, I can't make someone else happy. I know you have the ego to say, yes, I can, Julian. I make people happy all the time. No, you may magnify the happiness that is in someone already. You may magnify the happiness. That's what a loving relationship is. I, I don't make you happy, but what I do is I magnify the happiness that is in you already. If you have no happiness in you already, I can't make you happy. I can serve as yeast to your happiness. I can serve as yeast to your happiness, okay? But I can't make you happy, <coughs> okay? The best thing you can do is be happy yourself and hope that seeing and experiencing your joy activates the happiness within them. People pleasing prevents you from being free. People pleasing prevents you from being free. It is a futile effort because it is, it, is, it is impossible to please everyone. Even if you do manage to please everyone, you will likely be the one who isn't pleased because everyone's vision for you is different and you can't keep enough mask in your bag to switch on and off based on who is around. I'm gonna repeat that. People pleasing is a futile effort because it is impossible to please everyone. Even if you do manage to please everyone, you will likely be the one who isn't pleased. You're out here trying to please everybody else and you're the one that's not pleased. Make that make sense, okay? Why? Because everyone's vision, you have so many people around you in your life, everyone's vision for you is different. And you can't keep enough mass in your bag to switch on and off based on who is around. <laughs> Top of page 121. What if instead you were just you and your life was a unique expression of your beliefs? And as a result of being you, you attract people who accept you for who you truly are and are becoming rather than holding you to who you were and who they want you to be. I'm challenging your circle right now, family. If you look at the top 10 relationships around you, I need you to do a hardcore assessment of those who are around you, okay? What if you were surrounded by a group of people who had no agenda and only wanted what you want for yourself? I saw this video recently about what is a true friend as an adult. Here's my definition. A true friend is someone who wants what you want for yourself. A great mentor is someone who wants what you want for yourself. That's it. They have no hidden agenda whatsoever. They simply want what you want for yourself. They're not trying to manipulate you to do, be like this so that they can have this. Uh, oh yeah, you should go take that job so that we can have more money and I can, no. There's no hidden agenda. This is somebody who simply wants you, wants what you want for yourself. That's it. That's it. No other criteria. How many people around you right now simply want what you want for yourself? They don't want anything from you. They're not trying to get you to go down a particular path because that's going to be better for them. They simply want what you want for yourself. How would you feel if you had that kind of, those kind of people around you? Who would you be if you had those people around you? And what would you be doing if you had those kind of people around you? In chat, let me know how many people like that do you have around you right now in your circle? How many people around you, when you look at them, you take a hardcore assessment, how many people want what you want for yourself? You know that this person has no hidden agenda. They just love who I am and who I'm becoming. <clears throat> Just type the number. How many people do you have like that in your circle? Let me know. There's one, you got two people like that. Three, you got zero. I know some, it's okay. I know some people have zero. I know that's hard, family. I know that's hard. You only need one or two. You can't, that's it. You, having that expectation of everybody to have no agenda, that can be, um, yeah, not everybody operates like that. All you need is one or two. So if you have none right now, just know all you need is one or two, okay? But guess what? You likely have to be it for someone else first. 
Because if I ask you, if I flip the question, because you know I'm not letting you off the hook, if I flip the question, how many people are you that for? Watch this, y'all. I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna hold up the mirror to you. How many people are you being that for? How many people are you holding, holding space for and you simply just want what they want for themselves? How many? Okay, you might find that that number, you might find that that number is the same, right? You might find out that that number is the same number you typed before. You're not being it for anybody else. You have hidden agendas around all of your relationship. All the 10 relationships you just wrote, you got hidden agendas. I need her to be like this so that I can have this. I need him to be like this. I need them to do this over here so I can have this. So you might find that those numbers are actually identical. So rather than just hoping and praying that you have somebody like that in your life, how about you go be it for somebody first? Okay, <clears throat> page 121. Doing what is best for you is not selfish. This is going to free some folks right now. Doing what is best for you is not selfish. It is self-leadership. Doing what is best for you is not selfish. That's what the world has conditioned you to believe. It is self-leadership. What is selfish is someone else wanting you to be, do, or have something to please them. That's what's selfish. You calling me selfish because I'm doing something that I want to do. Don't you think it's selfish that you need me and want me to be something for you? That's selfish. You want me to change for you. But I'm telling you that this is actually what I believe is best for me. You're the one that's being selfish, not me. Screw that. I literally wrote that. Screw that. <laughs> Shortest sentence in the book. Let them figure out how to please themselves. Let them figure out how to please themselves. That's not your job. That's not your responsibility. Listen to me very carefully. Your joy is your job. And their joy is their job. Type that in. My joy is my job. If everybody knew that and moved in that way, we'd have a better world. No, it's nobody else's job to give you joy. <clears throat> not your significant other, not your boss, not your friends, not your parents. It's nobody else's job. My joy is my job, period. My joy is my job. And your joy is your job. I can't make you happy. Okay. Hopefully, the money and manifestation, money and manifestation mastermind group you are reading this book with has created a space that allows you to be you and is accelerating your reprogramming process. That was the purpose and intent. Sometimes the people who are close to you can't see how far you will go. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the money and manifestation mastermind group? We're essentially having one here, but if you go to the beginning of your book. There's a section for those of you who want to do this process with people, right? There's an, a section um, in the introduction called how to use this book, how to use this book. And that will teach you how to create your own money and manifestation uh, mastermind group where you can take your five books and uh, start a group with them so that you can hold each other accountable and that you can actually create this non-judgmental, unconditional loving friendship and relationship amongst this group, okay? So. Uh, we're at the bottom of page 21, or 121, excuse me, 121. While most people uh, try to fill their minds with what they think, uh, while most people try to fill their minds with what they think is right, an essential step towards mental freedom is emptying your mind, okay? Most people are trying to fill their minds with what they think is right, but the first step to mental freedom in the deprogramming process is to actually empty your mind. This is the phase of deprogramming. Bruce Lee once said, in order to taste my cup of water, you must first empty your cup. In order to taste my cup of water, you must first empty your cup. How many conversations have you been in with folks where their cup was full and you couldn't even pour into each other? You over here arguing, trying to 
share knowledge and information with each other, but because both of your cups are full, there's no space for you to pour into each other. So everything that you're saying is literally spilling over on each other. This is how many of us talk, okay? We have to empty out our cup first. Emptying your mind takes you back to your original state at birth of pure mind. Emptying your mind takes you back to your original state at birth of pure mind. Except now, as an adult, your mind isn't unguarded like it was before the age of seven because the conscious mind, the gatekeeper, the watcher has matured. So we are, as an adult, have to go back to pure mind, meaning that we've deprogrammed ourselves. We cleared off the hard drive of all beliefs that were programmed into us. And we are starting from scratch. It's called tabla rasa, blank slate. <clears throat> but now, now when we do this as adults, we aren't stepping into a world where our mind is unguarded because now our conscious mind has developed. So you get to declare what goes in and what comes out. This is the process of you becoming more you again, like it was in the beginning when all there was, when, when all there was, was you, okay? When all there was, was you, okay? Some call this being born again. You've heard Christians say, be born again. This is how you become born again, family. You deprogram your entire mind and you rebuild your life. You rebuild your temple from the ground up. This is what it means to be born again. You re literally recreate yourself. You're not coming through a woman's womb this time. You're coming through your own conscious mind and thought process. What Jay-Z say? Ho, remind yourself, nobody built like you, you design yourself. I agree, I said, my one of a kind self gets stoned every day like Jesus did. Because when you rebuild yourself in the face of people who have not rebuilt themselves, they want to throw stones. How dare you deprogram yourself? How dare you unplug from the matrix when I didn't have the courage to do so? How dare you pave your own road? How dare you take the road that's traveled? Who do you think you are? Ho, remind yourself, nobody built like you, you design yourself. I agree, I said, my one of a kind self gets stoned every day like Jesus did. Why is it that everybody who is walking their own path, people are attacking them? Because those people who are attacking them didn't have the courage to take their own unique path. And so they use the mob mentality of look at us here in the matrix, attack that person who's trying to do it on their own and go their own way, attack them. They're using, and they're rooted again in the mob mentality. Look how many of us are plugged in. How dare you break free? Reprogramming and deprogramming your mind is what it truly means to be born again. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> it's the one it's one thing to try to get good grades to please your parents but it's another thing to choose mastery because mastery because you value lifelong learning okay it's one thing to accept your parents religion because that's what you were born into and therefore all you know but it's another thing to step back and choose it for yourself from an empty mind you are now in a position to make up your mind literally you literally get to make up your mind you you heard people say just make up your mind that's not just a figure of speech you literally go through the process of making up your own mind. This is what some philosophers call tab tabula rasa. It's the theory that at birth, the mind is the blank slate without rules for processing data. And that data is added and rules for processing are formed solely by one's sensory experiences. Kids, they learn through observation, through the five senses. We're on page 122 now, okay? <clears throat> I believe that I don't know, listen to me. I believe that I don't know I are the three most powerful words in the world. Y'all think that I love you are the most powerful words in the world? I don't think so. I think that I don't know are the three most powerful words in the world. When you can set your, when you can set your current thinking aside and stay curious, you open yourself to discovering new things about yourself and the world. For many people, their mind stops evolving when they become an adult and think they know everything. This is why I said the most dangerous neighborhood in the world is what, family? 
What's the most dangerous neighborhood in the world? It's adulthood. The most dangerous neighborhood in the entire world where dreams go to die is adulthood. What's up, Neo? I got one for you. The most dangerous neighborhood in the world is adulthood, family. That's where you have the walking dead. It's not the cemetery. It's adulthood. Okay? That's where you should be ducking and running. Don't, don't get caught up in that. That's why scripture says, be ye childlike. Be ye childlike. Children have curiosity. Okay? Curiosity. Openness. Joy. Right? If you know everything, then what can anyone teach you? If you already know everything, then what can anybody teach you? If you know everything, why don't you have everything you want? I'm gonna just pause right there. If you know everything, you got it all figured out, why don't you have everything that you want? Help me make, make that make sense. You got this whole thing figured out, you know everything, but you don't have everything. So therefore you must not know everything. There's something that you don't know because there's a gap between what you say you know and what I see you actually experiencing right now. <clears throat> Despite vowing never to be like their parents, many people find themselves becoming more like them every day. Pleasing your parents is one, <clears throat> excuse me, pleasing your parents is one of the hardest apps running in your mental background to turn off. <clears throat> Pleasing your parents. I capitalize that intentionally. That's an app that many of us have running, right, in our mental background and can't even turn it off. The gravitational pull of the comfort zone, the desire to please others and fit in sucks many back in. The best solution is surrounding yourself with people who accept you as you are and only want for you what you want for yourself. Deprogramming feels like it is going backwards, but you must subtract before you add. Deprogramming feels like it is going backwards, but you must subtract before you add. The sculpture is in the rock. We must chisel away the unnecessary to see what's really there. This principle of subtracting before adding occurs mentally, physically, and financially whenever you are preparing to make a change. They say that great minds think alike. That's not true. Great minds don't think alike. They think authentically. Great minds do not think alike. That's what average minds do. They all think alike. Great minds think authentically. And you have a great mind within you, but you have to get all of the cooks out of the kitchen and chew on the food for thought yourself to create what you want to create and determine what you like and don't like. You got to get the cooks out the kitchen. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many, too many chiefs. What? Too many, uh, what did I say? Too many chiefs, not enough Indians or something like that. <coughs> Deprogramming means exploring your beliefs about God, money, freedom, family, relationships, health, love, politics, work, sex, and success with the hope to uncover the beliefs that bind you and find alternative truths that free you. For many people, the deprogramming process begins when they finally leave home and escape the watch of their primary influences. Being away from your family and the familiar exposes them to new ideas which either challenge or confirm their old ones. This experience opens up an individual's worldview and causes the mind to start thinking for itself as a way of defending or redefining itself. They say, don't drink and drive, but we are all driving under the influence when it comes to thinking and living. Your life is your vehicle to design, drive, and maintain. And it is time for you to get in the driver's seat and direct it where you want to go. Oh, that is it, family. That is our reading for today. For those of you who are just joining us, have no clue what you stepped into. We are reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets of Mastering Money Manifestation in Your Mind. We are in the section on how to reprogram your mind for more money. 
Um, we are live at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on weekdays on YouTube and Instagram. YouTube was acting up today, so we all came over to Instagram. So we always have a backup. If you would like to get a copy of the book, um, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. Again, that's moneyandmanifestation.com. You do not need to have the book in order to be here. This space is 100% free. OK, um, we will likely be reading this book together every weekday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time all the way until March. OK, and so right now we are on page 123. We will continue tomorrow with the reprogramming process and the run the program step of uh, the four step process to reprogram your mind for more money. Um, this has been an absolute joy. Thank you all for your patience with the technology today. I'm not sure what happened, um, but I will be home. Uh, be home tomorrow on my own network. And so I think we should be good. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. So we went long today because of the technical issues. Normally we are here for about 45 minutes to an hour uh, reading three to six pages um, in the book. All right. So uh, with that, um, I want to wish you all a great day, an abundant day. I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, if you'd like to order the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. It is pinned at the top. It is $100 for five copies of the book. It is $100 for five copies of the book. Why do I give you five? One is for you, four is for you to give to other people that immediately stimulate your personal economy by putting you in a state of giving. Okay, people keep asking me, Julian, can I just get one book? No, that defeats the purpose. Because if you change mentally, right, but your circle doesn't change, then you're going to end up doing the same thing. Thing, right we just talked about the influence of those that are around you right so um you get five copies of the book um and uh um you also get the rituals workbook which are the exercises that anchor in all of the teachings um and the exercises go along with each particular chapter right so you get the rituals workbook and um you also get the audio book um but of course we're ready to get together here so um uh, for absolutely free, but that's what you get for a hundred dollars. All right. Um, there are people who have bought the book uh, here in chat. So if you are experiencing lack in your life, but you know that you need this level of consciousness, right? Um, <clears throat> again, we are focused on creating the source and not just focus on the stream. Most people focus on the stream, which is the money. Okay. The stream is the money. Okay. Oh, I just want more money. You want the stream. We're focused on the source, right? The source is how money, knowing how money to manifest money, how it is created and how you can create it with your mind. We are focused on owning the source, not just the stream, all right? If you own the source, you'll have more than enough in terms of the stream. So that's what we're focused on is your wealth consciousness, moving you from poverty consciousness to wealth consciousness and making sure that you stay in an abundance mindset in the midst of what the collective consciousness is calling a recession, which is a scarcity-based word. Um, this space has been a blessing. I appreciate each and every one of you. Some of you have been here since day one. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces and names show up on YouTube and Instagram. And uh, that means that what we're discussing is um, valuable to you. And that means a lot to me. All right. So with that, um, I wish you a great day. I set a phone alarm for 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, every weekday. And I will see you tomorrow. All right. Much love, y'all. Peace.